Hello designers. So yesterday I asked on a community channel which new feature from Figma Config 2023 you want me to cover on a next video and a lot of you have voted for advanced prototyping. So here is a video on the same. So we'll look at how we can make use of this feature to create advanced dynamic prototype. So as usual, we'll first see a demo on what we're going to build today and then we can create it from scratch. So without any further ado, let's get started. And a quick note here that advanced prototyping is only available on the paid plans in Figma. So only on the paid plans, you'll be able to see this. So if you're not finding this feature, this would be the reason you won't be able to use this on your drafts you need to move the file to a teams project and also since you're getting started with advanced prototyping we need to understand what are variables so let me just give you a very basic understanding on what variables are in the context of figma so variables are nothing but a storage space where you can store something and your storage space has a name about it right so in the context of figma you have something called as collections and each of the collections has separate variables that you can create so let's consider it like a box and in the box you have spaces where you assign the space a name and give it a value you can store a value inside it and this value could be a four types a color a string a number or a boolean so this is a very basic understanding there's also something called as groups and modes but we'll try to understand this as we create the prototype so it's more easy to understand so let's jump onto figma and see a demo of what we're going to create today so as you can see here i have a checkout page and you might be wondering this pretty simple what's there in this but just wait for the prototype and you'll be amazed at what's possible with advanced prototyping features and Figma. So even to preview a prototype, we have a new feature. Like before, we don't have to click on the play button, which opens up a new tab. And then you have to switch between both these tabs. Now you can simply select the frame that you want and hit on space plus shift. And this opens up a new window on the canvas itself. And you can move this around and keep it wherever you want and make the changes and you'll see it reflect live on the prototype as well. So let's play around with the prototype and see what's so unique about this. So as you can see, I have a simple uh, standard checkout page. We have the product list and we have a subtotal and the total right so as i keep increasing the counter here you can see that the subtotal and the total value keeps increasing i can select this and change anything and the counter for this one remains here and i can change this as well right so as i keep increasing the subtotal is increasing then a 150 is getting added to the subtotal and that is shown on the total right so all this is happening and changing dynamically and nothing is being created on the screen right so we just have one screen on this whole canvas so i can just show you so there's, so there's no other screen and nothing uh, magic about this all this is happening with the help of variables and the new advanced prototyping features right and also let me just delete this so once i delete this the product is gone and the total and the subtotal also is reflected so all this is possible with just a single screen and that's the whole magic about this right so here we have a fresh new figma file with just a screen and none of the interactions or no variables created so we'll get started from the scratch so the first thing is once you click on the canvas when nothing is selected you'll see a new option here which says local variables and this is is what we are going to use to create the variables that we want to create this advanced prototype. So let's quickly look at the screen and analyze what are the different variables that we would need to achieve this prototype, right? So for that, if you look at the screen, uh, we want counter value, which changes the value here that we see here. All these could be controlled by one variable where we use the counter to increase the value or decrease the value. So this one value should be stored in a variable, right? So that we can keep changing it. And then we need a variable to store the subtotal. And then we also need a variable to store the total right based on the screen i feel these are the different values or the variables that we need so the first thing here is we need to create this so i'm just going to duplicate this and bring it outside so that we can create a main component here so the first thing i'll just create this as a component and now this is a component right so we need to set a create a variable for this one right here so for that let me just click on the canvas and go back to the option where we can create variables so i select this option here and it opens up a new window where we can basically create variables and collect that I told you about. So on the left, you can create collections and inside collections, you can basically create variables. So we'll just rename this collection for now. So I'm just going to rename this to, let's say, checkout. So this will be our checkout collection. And inside checkout collection, we have the variables that we'll be creating. So the first variable, we are going to create it as a number because we are dealing with numbers here. We want to increase the quantity and the count of the products. So I'm going to use number here and we're going to rename this, let's say, item count. So I'm going to use a variable name. This could be any name that you want and I'll give the count as one because as you see on the checkout page all basically starts from one right so I'm going to give the default value here as one and that will act as a counter so we have created a new variable right now so I'm just going to close this and let's zoom in back here and now on click of plus button you want this to increase by one and on click of minus it should basically decrease by one right so for that I'm going to select this plus button here and we are going to add an interaction to this so for that I go to the prototype tab here and add a new interaction and this time on click we got 
to select a new option here which is set variable so once i click on set variable you can choose which variable that you want to change so this is the item count so i'll click on item count you want to write an expression here right so what change you want to apply to item count variable is what you have to mention here so item count i want to change it by one right i want to add one to it right so first i'll select item count here you can see all the variables here or you can type and search here so i already have it here so i'll just select it and with item count i want to add one so it's simply you will see the different operations here you can select it from here or just hit plus on the keyboard so i'm hitting plus on the keyboard and i choose one so every time i click on the plus button the item count has to increase by one and that is what we wrote here right so i'll just press enter and now you can see this is the expression or the action that is going to happen on click so on click item count becomes item count plus one so that looks good i'm just going to close this and the same thing let's do it with the minus as well so i click on minus and i add an interaction here so set variable and this time item count becomes item count minus one every time you click on minus the item count should reduce by one so that is what we just wrote here so that looks good and now we are missing one more thing here so we are doing this change on the item count variable but we haven't assigned the item count variable to anything on the screen right so you have to select this text here and assign that variable to this particular text and for that just select the text here and in the text column you'll see this new option which says apply variable just click on this and choose the variable that we just created so this is item count and now every time you do an action here the variable gets reflected and you'll see that reflected value which gets assigned to the text here so that is a very basic working logic now let's apply this on the screen and see how this works right so i'm just going to copy the component here and we'll replace all of these static with the component that we just created so i'm just going to select this so you can right click on this and say paste to replace or use the shortcut which is shift command and r and this replaces the static with the component that we just created so i'm just going to do it for all these three right here so we just replaced everything and now let's see a preview of this so i hit on shift spacebar and the prototype is open so as i click on this you can see that the value is increasing and the value is decreasing but there's a problem here that this is changing the value of all the quantities here right so once you increase this you don't want the other ones to change right so let's see how we can fix this with a feature called as modes that we spoke about in the very beginning so i'll just close this once again so going back to the local variables that we just created so here we have a new feature to add modes as well so this is a new variable mode and this will basically help us to maintain separate item counts for different things right so let's say this is one mode this is one mode and this is one mode we need three modes so that we can separately maintain the count of each of these products so for that we are just going to create modes here so the first mode here call this as mx keys so this would be mx keys so this will maintain the counter of the mx keys and then we'll add a new one and we'll call this as pop keys so this will maintain the counter for the next product and similarly the last mode and this will be mx mouse and this can be used to maintain the counter for the mx mouse right so those are the different modes that we will create and now let's assign these to different modes and see how this will work so i'll just close this once again so mode is something like we can apply it to the overall component everything inside that component will reflect or take the changes of that particular mode right so for that i'm just going to select this component right here and here on the layer we have this option where we can change the variable mode right so once i click on this and go to checkout that is the collection that we created and this should take the mode of mx keys right so every time i change the counter of mx keys it only reflects on this particular thing so i select this and similarly i'll select this one and apply the mode of this one to pop keys and for this one we are going to apply the one for the mx mouse so everything is applied now and now let's see a preview of this so i hit on shift space bar and this time you can see that this works separately right so everything works individually and you don't have to worry about it so everything is individual and it works pretty fine so now that our counter is working properly now let's see how we can use the counter to change the values on the screen the subtotal and the total right so let me just close this once again and as i told you we need two more variables one is for the subtotal and one is to maintain the total value right so for that we'll just go back to the local variables and create a new variable so once i create a new variable here so this one is again going to be a number so i select number but now we can see that there are different modes right but for the subtotal and the total we don't need modes so everything becomes one so 
So you add all the values and you just need one mode. So this one doesn't work right here. So for that reason, I'm just going to delete this and we are going to maintain a new collection for this where we have only one node, right? So I go to create collection and we are going to call this as totals. Okay. And in the totals, I'm going to create a new variable, which is going to be a number. And this one will be your subtotal where we'll calculate the subtotal and a new variable where we'll calculate, let's say the total value. So the default value, we want to give the calculated value for this one. So the subtotal would be, let's say the subtotal here is two, four, and the total is going to be 150 added to that, which is two, four, six, five, zero. So these are going to be the default values that we want. And I'm just going to close this. So now let's assign these created variables to the subtotal values here. So I'm just going to zoom in here and select the value here. So I've just created these as two different elements, because if you create this as one single element, you won't be able to assign currency to it. So that is the reason I created two different text here and created an auto layout so that so as the value keeps increasing, the currency automatically keeps moving to the left. So you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to select this and in the text properties, we have to assign the variable that we just created. So I click on this option here, which is apply variable and we'll choose the subtotal because this is the subtotal, right? So I'll just select this. So I'll do the same thing for the total as well. We'll select the total text here and apply the variable from this option and select total. So we have assigned the variables to the subtotal and the total. But now let's see how we can add the logic based on the counter, how these values keep reflecting dynamically. So for that, I'm going back to the component that we created here and just zooming in. So on the plus button right now, we just have an interaction which basically changes this counter value. And now we need to add a logic where we can keep changing the total. And for that, I'm going to go inside this interaction that we created and we'll add a new set variable, which will increase the subtotal value. So for that, I'm going to hit on the plus button here and choose set variable. So we want to set the variable for the subtotal, right? So I'll choose subtotal here and here we'll write the logic or the formula that we want based on which this calculation happens. So for that, let me just zoom out a bit and see the values right here. So the first thing is we want to take the count of the MX keys, multiply it with 9000 and then add it to the next ones as well, right? So the first thing what we want is the count of MX keys. For that, we have the item count. I choose item count. And once again, you have to click on this because we want only the instance or the mode which has the MX keys item count or else it'll take the count of any of the three, right? So I'm going to select on this or click on this once again, and this will show the different modes that we have. So I'm going to choose MX keys. And right now it has the item count of only MX keys, right? So with this, we want to use the multiplication, multiply it with 9000, right? Because 9000 is the value of this particular product. And even this, you can maintain it as variables if you want to keep changing the value or you can just use static values here that is up to you, right? So I just wanted to show you that you can also use static values here. And that is the reason we have it here. So this one calculates the total uh, of this particular product. And now we have plus item count again, but this time the item count of pop keys. So I again click on item count and choose the mode pop keys. And we'll multiply this again by 9500 because that is a value here. And again, plus item count this time, the item count of MX mouse. So this one again multiplied by 6000, which is the value of that product. So we have the total formula created. As you can see, we are just multiplying the quantity with the value of the product and adding it three times, right? So we have everything ready. I just hit on enter. So this is our next variable that has to be set on click of plus button. So now let's repeat the same thing for the minus button as well. So I click on minus button. I select the interaction that we created. We are going to add a new variable. And this time again, the subtotal, we just have to do the same formula, right? because it has to just keep calculating every time you click on this button. So the same thing that we did before, I'm just going to do it quickly and I'm going to fast forward this part. So there you go. I have added the same formula that we used just before for the plus button as well. And now let's see how this behaves on the prototype. So I'll just close this, come back to the prototype and I'll hit on shift spacebar. So we have the prototype open and every time I click on this plus button, you can see that the value here is being calculated and added to the subtotal, right? So any product I change, it exactly reflects. So we have 6,000, it's 80,000 here. So I hit on plus, it becomes 86,000. So it's working pretty fine, right? Even the minus button, you can see 
see that it works perfectly. Even here, if I change it, the minus and the plus button works seamlessly. So that is how you dynamically change the variable and assign it to a particular text, right? So now let's see how the subtotal can be added with the 150 here and shown at the total value right here, right? Because the total value is not changing right now. So let me just close this once again and go back to the interaction. So I again select on the plus button here, go into the interaction. And now we want to set a new variable again, which is the total variable that we created, right? So again, I hit on the plus button, set variable. And this time we want to change the variable value of total. So I select total here and we want to give the formula here, right? So since the subtotal is already being calculated, I can directly use the subtotal variable. And with the subtotal, I want to add the shipping charges, which was 150, right? So I'll just add 150 to this and that's it. We are done. And we'll repeat the same thing for the minus as well. I open this, set a new variable and change the total. Here, the subtotal has to increase by 150. And that's it. Let's see how this works. I go back to the frame right here, use shift space bar. So as I keep increasing the quantity, you can see that the total also gets reflected and this is again dynamic. So along with the subtotal, 150 is getting added and that is the value being shown at the total column, right? So that is how we can use set variable in interactions to create such advanced prototypes. But there's a small problem here. So in case I change the value to zero and again, click on this minus, you can see that it goes to minus values, right? It goes to the negative values and this is not a logical thing to happen on a prototype. And this can be fixed again with a new feature in Figma that is conditional statements. So let's see how we can use that in advanced prototyping. So let me just close this once again and go back to the component that we created. So on the case of minus, we want a condition that if the item count is zero, you don't want the button to work anymore, right? So for that, we are going to choose the interaction once again, and we're going to add a new interaction here, which is basically conditional. So conditional basically allows you to create conditions like if this is the case, this should happen, else this should happen, right? So we'll create a small condition here, which will limit button to work once the count reaches zero, right? So I click on condition. So we have to write the condition here. So I'll just click here and our condition is based on the item count. So I'm going to choose item count. So only if the item count is greater than zero, I want this minus button to work else I don't want it to work, right? So I'm going to use the greater than symbol. I can type it on the keyboard or just select it from here. So I'll choose greater than and type zero. So the condition here is only if the item count is greater than zero, whatever is below is going to work, right? So only if this condition is true, this action will be executed. So that is the logic here, right? It's pretty simple. And here you want all this action to happen, right? And I can select this and create everything. But more than that, it's simple that you can just drag these actions inside this. So let me just minimize these actions and show you how we can drag it inside, right? So I just have to click here and drag it inside this, right? So that is how it gets added here. So I'm just going to do the same thing for all the three, just clicking and dragging it inside the if condition. So what is happening right here is only if the item count is greater than zero, this particular action would be executed, right? So now it is set. Let's see if this works or not. So I'm just going to close this and going back to the prototype or the frame, shift space bar and a prototype is open. So I can increase the values here. It works fine. Everything seems to work fine. But once I go to zero, even though I click this button, nothing seems to work. So that is how you can see that the condition is working. So even if I click, nothing seems to work here. And that is how we can use conditional statements to control any kind of actions that you want on the screen. And there are a lot of use cases for this. But on a checkout screen, this is how it's going to work. But that's it for this video. If you found this helpful, definitely hit on the like button and also the subscribe button if you want to get updates of the next videos that I post. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.